Hey y'all, welcome back. It is officially fall here um, at the farm. It's, how, what's the temperature? He can't hear me. It's so windy outside. I don't know, it's, it's chilly outside. Um, and it's really windy, which is why I'm standing in the garage right now because I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear me when I get out there. Um, but Tyler and I are gonna be bending some hoops today uh, and we thought we'd take you along for that process. Before we get started, I wanted to walk y'all down to the outdoor garden and tell you exactly why we're bending hoops. Okay, so we are here in the outdoor garden. Uh, I'll spin you around here. Things are looking, um, well, half the garden looks good. I got all my fall stuff over there. Collards, broccoli, cabbage, bok choy, broccoli. I have some Brussels sprouts in the ground. Everything there is looking good. The insect netting is holding up for now, doing its job. I can tell it's starting to kind of break down a little bit. But it should um, continue to do its job long enough for me to get at least these crops out of the ground before anything um, destroys them. And now that the cold weather is here, I don't know how strong the pest pressure is going to be anyways. Um, but yeah, so outdoor garden, this is what we're bending hoops for today. We are going to make some low tunnels out here because if you watched, uh, I don't think it was the last video, maybe the video before last, um, I briefly mentioned that... Uh, I kind of wanted to dabble a little bit more into, oh, I'm sorry, the wind, y'all, it's, it's bad. I wanted to dabble a little bit more into cut flowers um, and see how that went for me. So if I'm going to do something, I'm just going to do it and I'm going to go all in generally. <laughs> um, hence the reason I have a big high tunnel back here. Um, so yeah, I got a wholesale account with a company called, I think it's ADR Bulbs. I'll link it down here. I think that's what it is. It may be ARD bulbs, but anyways, they came recommended to me from Sean at Mindful Farmer. Anything that he recommends is good, so <laughs> I knew it was good to go with them. Uh, got a wholesale account with them. I ordered 1,000, which for a legit cut flower farmer, this is not a big deal, but for me, this is a big deal. But I ordered 1,000 ranuncula corms. I keep wanting to call them croms. It's C-O-R-M-S, but it's corms, I think. Obviously, I'm not a real cut flower farmer. Um, I ordered I, I ordered more than 400 tulip bulbs, but I was delivered 400 tulip bulbs because something happened after I ordered them and um, the order process and all that. I guess they had somehow sold out of, of quite a few of the tulips that had that I had ordered. Um, they had refunded my money for the ones I didn't receive, but I ended up with 400 tulip bulbs, which was a little bit fewer than what I wanted, but that's okay. Um, and then I, I also have some anemone corms. Um, I did not order those from ADR bulbs because by the time I decided to go all in with this, a lot of the stuff was sold out. That's something I'm learning with flowers um, is that if you want to do flowers, you need to, and you're going to order things like bulbs, corms, and tubers. You better know you're going to do it as soon as those sorts of things are put on the websites because they sell out really quickly. By the time I got, actually, I was at work and I had all of this stuff in my cart. I had quite a few anemone bulbs in my cart and I was going to place the order when I got home. And when I got home, all the anemones had been taken out of my cart that were sold out. So um, I ended up going to Tractor Supply the other day and they had just some small bags of anemones. So I picked up a few of those just to kind of play around with those. But anyways, they were all delivered the other day um, and I'm going to be putting them in the outdoor garden. Uh, when springtime hits, I'm also going to be doing um, some other flowers out here. Of course, zinnias and things like that, but some flowers and stuff. Um, but I'm going to try to overwinter these ranunculas and anemones. And in order to do that here in my zone in Arkansas, they have to have some sort of frost protection. So I have talked to quite a few local flower farmers around here in the state and asked them if I could successfully grow in low tunnels outdoors. Um, they are assuring me that they do that. They've been doing it for several years now and they have great success with it. Um, some people will say that you have to grow them in high tunnels. They need a little bit more protection in, in the high tunnel. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really want to use that high tunnel space though. I, I have a high tunnel obviously, but I'm just not willing to commit that space in the high tunnel. So I'm going to try to do... Um, I'm going to try to do the low tunnels today. So that's that's what we're doing. I'm going to pre-sprout my ranunculas and my anemones. I watch, if you don't know about pre-sprouting, don't ask me any questions because I'm, I'm by no means an expert. I watched a course from Florette 
that told me about that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna pre-sprout. So that's what I'm gonna do, what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna start that either today or tomorrow. So when those guys are pre-sprouted and they're ready to go on the ground, I have to have these tunnels ready because it's getting cold. They're gonna have to have some sort of so yeah, we're just gonna take you along for the ride on building these low tunnels, how we're doing it, how we're bending these hoops. Um, you can get hoop benders from Johnny's Seeds. That's not what we're doing today. I'll, I'll turn you around here in a minute. I'll show you how we're gonna do it. We don't like to do things the easy way around here. So we're gonna do it a little bit different way, trying to save a few bucks. So we'll see how it goes. So before we get started, I wanted to mention, um, I don't know, you may be questioning you know, why are you putting so much effort into flowers and why are you putting so much money into flowers? Um, first of all, I'm not giving up the, the food side of the market garden by any means. Um, I still got that tunnel full of lettuce, spinach, carrots, and all that. Um, but something that I'm quickly learning is that if you are able to put the money up front, the money and time and effort up front to growing flowers, and you do it successfully, you're gonna make a profit off of it. Flowers are pretty dang profitable. Um, so if, if, yeah, if you're willing to put the money and the effort up front and you can do it su successfully, you're gonna make some money off of it. Um, so I'm obviously willing to put the money up front. I'm obviously willing to put the effort up front. Can I do it successfully? I don't know, there's only one way to find out. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully the winter will be kind to us. Uh, it won't be too terribly wet. It won't be too terribly cold, um, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna show y'all what we're working with in terms of supplies. <clears throat> so we are going with, this is half inch, correct? Yeah. Half inch uh, electrical conduit, about five-ish dollars a piece. Um, we bought 37 of them, I think. We were going to purchase two foot um, rebar to hold these guys in the ground. Um, they were a little on the expensive side. They were about five bucks each, right? Yeah. And we were going to need 74-ish of them. Um, so we didn't want to pay that. So we bought this. What was this, Tyler? It was in there with the electrical conduit. I don't, I don't even know what this is, but it was in there with the electrical conduit right next to it. 10 foot sections and um, $2 a piece. Yeah, it was 10 foot sections, two bucks a piece. So we're just gonna cut these uh, two foot each um, and make our own, basically make our own little rebar pieces. And the purpose of these, we'll show you when we're done, but the purpose of these is you drive them in the ground, um, one on each side, and then the hoop. Here's one we practice on the hoop. That's what's gonna hold the hoop up. So uh, rebar or whatever you use goes in the ground and then you set the hoop on top of it and that holds it up. So. Um, you can get hoop benders on Johnny Seeds or other places, um, which is really cool and all, but we didn't want to pay for that because uh, obviously we've already spent quite a bit of money. So we are going with this tire option here. Um, we're holding the tire in place with uh, this, uh, what is this? A T-post. So Tyler drove the T-post in the ground, put the thing on top of it. Do you think we should put another? No, because we're going to pull back this way. So okay. It'll, it'll just... Okay, and then we're just gonna bend the hoop around it. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so he's on one side, I'm on the other. We're gonna try to keep it um, just like right on the tire the whole time that we're bending it. You ready? Yeah. take you over here and show you so you can see that the edges are kind of cocked out they're not straight down so all he's gonna do is just take it and pull it in right yeah. pull in a little more on the tire and that should be roughly yeah, yeah I mean, that's pretty good yes yeah, though so if we measure that that should be roughly four foot tall which is what the others are um, and then if we have any that are a little wonky that aren't measuring out right or look kind of funny, basically he's just using his foot and he's kind of stepping it out with his foot um, and just kind of manhandling it and bending it. They're not hard to bend at all.
Okay, so something we're finding that's making it much more uniform is when Tyler has all of these marked at five foot. So he's got a little mark, five foot mark there. So that's exactly in the middle since they're 10 foot sections. Um, and so really when you bend it, ideally that mark should be the very top of your hoop. So basically you just want to make sure when you put it on your tire, right where the conduit connects to the tire is right at that um, five foot marker or middle mark. So that's where we start. We make sure that's the starting point and then we bend from there. Okay, so we just bent that one. Where's the mark at? It's on your side somewhere. Right here in the middle. Okay, so um, once we bent it, the mark is pretty spot on right there in the middle of the top of the hoop. So um, yeah, it's pretty even that way. So I would recommend to do it that way get your, your middle mark, mark it there, and then make sure that's the point at which it connects to the tire. Um, the other thing is when you're bending, make sure you're both, uh, you know, you got your starting point here. You want to maintain that same level across all tires. So if you're kind of starting to go up or down, it's going to make your hoop all wonky. Um, so make sure you both know kind of where you're keeping that mark on the tire and you're bending it uniformly around the tire. Okay, the wind is crazy right now so I don't know how well you can hear me but all the hoops are bent um, the other last little tidbit of information or, or helpful hint I'll give you is that once you have it bent you're each on the other end where you you know you've completed the bend make sure you're letting go of pressure at the same time because if he lets go of pressure and I'm still bending it's gonna mess the whole bend up so you know when we get to that end a point he says okay and I say okay and then we both release pressure at the same time that way one person's not still bending and the other one releases and then it's just gonna mess the whole thing up so um, have a little bit of communication going there he's measuring that metal stick over there that metal rod uh, two fit sections sections we only bought two sticks so we'll only have 20 total because uh, we weren't hundred percent oh shoot <laughs> <laughs> only have 10 total. Listen, math's not my strong point. Uh, <laughs> we'll only have 10 total because we weren't sure how it was going to work out. So we didn't want to buy a whole bunch and then it not work at all. So it's working. We'll just need to go back and get some more of those. So we'll be able to finish it out. And he's just taking bolt cutters. Uh, is it easy to cut? Pretty much? It's on the ground. Yeah. Okay. So he's just cutting them and we'll finish out what we can. So we take you over here and show you one that is completed and put into the ground over here. Um, he's just measuring the bottom, 42. 42 inches. So when we go to put these in the ground, we're putting, we tire went ahead and cut two foot sections on that. Um, it's not rebar, whatever it was, that metal stick. Uh, we put one there, one there, 42 inches apart slid the conduit over it so at the base it's 42 inches apart at the top it's four foot tall um, and then we went ahead and tied some string and tied it all the way down you can see um, and we just attached it to the fence down here and made sure it was 42 inches apart that way when we go to put our metal sticks in the ground here they're going to each be 42 inches apart so that way we know that the base of each hoop is uniform and the same so each hoop will be 42 inches apart and that's just going to make um the height of the hoop a little more uh uniform as well we're going to do i don't know what the recommended if there is a recommended amount of spacing you put between each hoop we're going to do roughly five and a half feet these beds are we just measured them they were 27 seven foot long so we measured halfway 13 and a half foot Put our two rods in tyler buried them about a foot deep so that leaves another foot to slide the hoop on and he just slid it over there so slid it over the top good. yeah um and then all we'll do here is put one in between right in the middle of those two and then right in the middle of these two and that should have that bed complete and then you can cover it with whatever covering you want to use i still haven't ordered my frost covering i need to get on that because shipping delays you know are just 
crazy right now um but yeah but then so these will stay in these can also be used for insect netting if you wanted to do that um can be used for shape cloth if you wanted to do that um so they they should come in handy throughout the summer as well um for pests and and you know high heat and that sort of thing but so far so well the tire was free so our hoop bending mechanism um you know versus paying i think they run about 50 bucks if you buy a hoop bender a four foot hoop bender um this was free because we got that from a tire shop up the road that's just an old tire that they were going to have to pay to get rid of anyway so they were more than happy for us to take whatever tires we wanted to take um so that's what we went with okay and one row of i think about let's see one two three four five six seven eight ish rows is done um not bad for two people who don't know what they're doing i will say it looks when you look at it this way <clears throat> it looks good but it looks a little it's kind of hard to tell in video it looks a little off like these look tilted because i'm moving these beds over a bit so basically half the bed is filled with good soil and then the other half i need to bring in some more soil there but um yeah it doesn't look bad and you can tell like some of the little imperfections like that one there is maybe a little more arched than the one behind it but i mean for a free hoop bender that's not terrible um so yeah unless you're just like a major perfectionist and it's got to be 100 percent perfect this looks uh to like to the naked eye when you come out and just look at it it looks pretty dang spot on okay so that is where we're going to call it today because we are out of the little metal pieces to drive into the ground we got to go back to Lowe's and get some more all the hoops are bent though um so yeah we just got to go get more of those cut those get them in the ground and we should be ready to roll um do we is it time to make the official announcement sure okay <laughs> I don't really know how to make these sort of announcements, but um, I've actually been meaning to tell y'all for, gosh, a good month, month and a half now, and every time I shoot a video, I get done, and I'm like, oh, dang, I forgot to mention that, but if you follow us on Instagram, you already know, because I did, uh, I did make the announcement there. Um, the big announcement is that we are adding one final farm hand to the family. Uh, we are expecting a... Don't look so excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are... He is actually really excited. We are expecting our final child come... It's, my due date is April the 15th. Uh, I have a feeling it will come end of March because uh, both of the boys came a little bit early. Um, so if history repeats itself, this, this little guy will come end of March. And yes, it is a little guy. Uh, we found out the other day. So three boys in the house, four boys really with this one here. Uh, I'm outnumbered by many. Um, so I'm a boy mom for life and we are very excited. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's our announcement. Um, so yeah, y'all are going to, I guess, get to follow along that little journey with us. Um, it was it was tough going there for a little while uh hence the reason i think i made an announcement in one of my videos a while back that you know i had been a little under the weather i haven't been posting much because i was sick as a dog i felt awful um but feeling much better now things are going good now i'm, I'm back on track and uh yeah we're excited and can't wait to share him with you guys when he gets here uh but until then we're just gonna keep farming and doing our thing here See y'all next time. <laughs> Bye.